this is an important video for all Tesla stock investors. Something big is brewing at Tesla and you will want to watch this one in full. For us long-term Tesla stock investors, it's important to remember what happened five years ago. When Tesla stock was at $20 per share, the Tesla bears were celebrating Tesla's second recent round of layoffs as proof that the growth story was over. If you appreciate that context, please hit the like button right now. This video today is only about Tesla. Let's dive in. Elon just commented on what's happening with Tesla about every five years, we need to reorganize and streamline the company for the next phase of growth. And it was rumored that Tesla was in talks to lay off as many as 30,000 people. Adding to all of this, a few key Tesla executives lost their Tesla badges on X. However, we know that only two of them are actually no longer with Tesla. I think no longer having a shook would be very bearish for Tesla's FSD, which is exactly what my conclusion was when Andre left. So I turned out to be right about that but Ashok now has the Tesla affiliate badge on his account so Ashok is staying whoever took away Ashok's badge is likely to lose his or her job and the layoffs have now been confirmed Tesla will indeed lay off more than 10 percent of its global workforce an internal memo said so the media of course jumped on this story and uh some of the headlines say the mass exodus of Tesla executives in the last 12 months. Oh, I'm so sorry. Somehow I just pulled out a story from 2019, you know, when Tesla stock was under $20 per share, roughly. Which, of course, undeniably proves that the only thing that these layoffs can symbol is bearishness. Tesla is done. It's never going to get better from here, just like it did not back in 2019. No, Tesla right now is simply restructuring to get ready for the next phase of growth. And indeed, this is no longer the Tesla of old. This is a new beginning and something big is happening and is going to happen at Tesla. And some chaos and restructuring is often required before accomplishing big things. And this is the email that Elon Musk sent to all of Tesla's employees. I think it's important to go through this because we want to hear directly from Elon Musk. Over the years, we have grown rapidly with multiple factories scaling around the globe. With this rapid growth, there has been duplication of roles and job functions in certain areas. As we prepare the company for our next phase of growth, it is extremely important to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity. As part of this effort, we have done a thorough review of the organization and made the difficult decision to reduce our headcount by more than 10% globally. There is nothing I hate more, but it must be done. This will enable us to be lean, innovative, and hungry for the next growth phase cycle. I'd like to thank everyone who is deporting Tesla for their hard work over the years. I'm deeply grateful for your many contributions to our mission, and we wish you well in your future opportunities. It is very difficult to say goodbye. For those remaining, I would like to thank you in advance for the difficult job that remains ahead. We are developing some of the most revolutionary technologies in auto, energy, and artificial intelligence. As we prepare the company for the next phase of growth, your resolve will make a huge difference in getting us there. Thanks. Elon. If you watched every video of mine, you will remember that a few months ago, Tesla abruptly stopped doing annual reviews and stopped discussions about stock option compensation. So ever since then, Tesla has been sort of expected to do something about the number of people that work for Tesla. And now it has finally happened. Let's get back to the Tesla executives that are no longer with Tesla. Were they fired? Did they just leave? What's going on? Well, it's official that Drew Baglino is indeed no longer with with Tesla. He says, I made the difficult decision to move on from Tesla after 18 years yesterday. I am so thankful to have worked with and learned from the countless incredibly talented people at Tesla over the years. I love tackling nearly every problem we solved as a team and feel gratified to have contributed to the mission of accelerating the transition to sustainable energy, a mission that I am quite passionate about. I will always have a warm spot for the people of Tesla and Tesla products in my heart and wish a team and company the best in the future. When I joined as a junior firmware electrical engineer back in 2006, a future Tesla that produced the world's top selling vehicle was well beyond my expected set of outcomes. A reminder to all of us to set higher expectations, I guess. He continues, looking forward, I have no concrete plans beyond spending more time with my family and young kids, but as people who know me well can attest, I have difficulty sitting still for long. Elon replied with, thanks for everything you have done for Tesla. Few have contributed as much as you 
Thank you for always pushing us to do our best work from first principles. It's the only way to unlock the art of the possible, responded Drew Baglino. Based on that interaction between the two, the relationship remains positive. I think Gary has a fair point here. No one should be surprised Drew and other executives are leaving as part of Tesla's 10% layoff announcement. Someone has to take the fall for the sharp deceleration in deliveries growth near record inventories and declining margins, and it wasn't going to be Elon. Gary is basically very clearly implying that Drew Baglino was actually fired. Rohan Patel made an official statement statement as well. It's official that he is no longer with Tesla. Elon Musk also replied to him, thanks for everything you have done for Tesla, much appreciated. I haven't communicated a lot publicly, so it's not too difficult to conclude what happened exactly. Was he fired or did he actually depart on his own? And in the last few weeks, he has been making a lot of forward-looking comments comments that would make you think that he is staying with tesla for many years to come or at least certainly until the end of the year until fsd is solved here do you think tesla will have the data to prove that fsd is overwhelmingly safer than human drivers i think they will get there yes and we won't be shy clearly indicating that he would be a part of that and on friday he also made a comment like this wasn't aware we'll look into this so it seemed to me that on friday rohan was still working as if he was committed to Tesla and was planning to stay at Tesla for a relatively long period of time still. So while he might not have actually been fired, the question about his future at Tesla almost definitely was brought up by the Tesla team and not him. Unlikely what happened was the question was brought up and uh, Rohan said, well, if you think that um, I'm not really needed here or that it's not essential for me to stay here, I am happy to leave. So likely both sides agreed, but it was initiated by the Tesla team. Because if it was his idea, I would have expected him to not make forward-looking statements, at least for the last maybe few days or uh, at least a week. With Drew's case though, it's much more difficult to determine that because he doesn't really say anything publicly. But he did make a few comments. Here's one from April 9th and this was a pretty forward-looking statement as well. So if he was really planning to leave Tesla, I think he would have decided by April 9th that yeah indeed uh, on April 15th I will be leaving Tesla. If that was the case, I don't really think that he would have made a forward-looking statement like this. This doesn't strike me as a comment from someone who is going to leave the company in a week. If you are going to leave the company in one week, how come are you still so hands-on with relatively small details? I mean, it's certainly possible, but that does make it less likely that it was Drew's idea to lead the company. Drew, of course, has been instrumental to Tesla and he has been an important member of the Tesla team. But looking at all of these details, it's one thing to see executives leave because they want to leave. And it's another thing to see an executive leave because likely Elon Musk said, you gotta go. With Andre Karpathy, I think it was his idea to leave Tesla, but with Rohan Patel and Drew Baglino, I don't think that's the case. In other words, Elon Musk has a clear plan of what to do next. He was not blindsided by multiple executives just leaving. It was likely his idea, and so that's why I would say this is, in the long term, a buying opportunity. Just like it was in the beginning of 2019, uh, but remember, Tesla stock did drop about 50% from $20 per share for a moment. Yeah, I remember that summer. <laughs> oh, that's what I became a Tesla stock investor. Mm. So I am not saying that in the short term, Tesla stock is uh, going to go up only from here on. I'm saying for those of us that have a lot of patience, this is not looking bad at all. When there's blood on the streets, buy even if it's your own blood. However, going forward, we will certainly probably have less communication from Tesla with Rohan now no longer at Tesla. Rob Maurer actually replied to Rohan, um, you know, if Rob suddenly was hired by Tesla and if he was in charge of Tesla's PR department, I think that would be one of the best moves that Tesla could 
pull off in terms of its PR. I don't expect that to happen, but if it does, wow, I will be very impressed. In the meantime, what are fund managers thinking about this whole thing? Here is Gary Black. The biggest question facing investors is whether to re-rate Tesla's multiple down from its current level of 60. If they conclude Tesla's 2024 volume deceleration is secular rather than due to one-time factors on so the Model 3 changeover, Red Sea disruption, Berlin Gigafactory fire, much depends on what Elon says on the Q1 earnings call, which is coming up soon in about one week now. We will probably hear on the earnings call what is going on with the compact vehicle and the Robotaxi. Gary, though, says most investors share our view that Robotaxi is still too far in the future to impact Tesla's volume growth. I think he's largely talking about fund managers. A 45 to 50 PE would put Tesla at 125 to 140 dollars looking at elon musk's track record he does some of his very best work under extreme pressure and right now the stakes are getting higher so i think we will see elon musk being more committed to tesla if you have been unhappy with how things were going at tesla this whole shakeup at tesla should actually give you more confidence because it indicates that tesla is likely going to take a different direction going forward you all wanted 99 dollar per month fsd look what you have done now they paid for that discover directly no salary i think this part makes sense elon loves efficiency and is likely overcutting to see if output per person will increase in other words i bet they only needed to cut five percent in the near term but tesla is cutting at least ten percent gene monster thinks that it's going to be a year plus before gross margins expand from current 17 percent levels i still believe the combination of increasing deliveries in 2025 and beyond plus fsd will get gross margins margins to 30%, which I think would be really bullish. I think this captures the current situation very well. Oh, JB is leaving. JB Straubel, who was very important to Tesla. He's a co-founder of Tesla. How could we ever replace him? Who the hell is this Drew guy anyway? So a few years pass by and oh no, Drew is leaving. This is the end. If you are a new Tesla stock investor, we have been through this many times before. In pretty much all instances, Tesla has a history of bringing in new blood that is able to carry the momentum forward without a hitch. It's without a doubt that Tesla is undergoing some major restructuring. It's been in Tesla's arc to transition from a transportation-only company to a transportation-slash-energy-slash-AI company as a ramp FSD and bot efforts plus energy storage and solar. To achieve this at a high level and at maximum speed, there needs to be a combination of A, a lean warfare force that is adept at removing any and all obstacles that appear and be a motivated workforce that is willing to make large sacrifices in order to make it happen within the culture that Elon Musk creates. A 10% layoff is bigger than usual for Tesla. I think this is partly a measure to ensure the company stays lean and to also right size for the challenging environment in 2024 as it relates to EVs. Even though EVs are still growing, Tesla and others are between growth curves as they transition into their mass market $25,000 platforms plus robotaxi. However, I don't think that's going to be viewed as a positive either, says Forza. Losing great talent always sucks and taking steps to ensure the gaps are filled is painful and will take time. This will be additional strain on Elon and Tesla as they navigate this period. However, just like with any company, it's incredibly important that the organization is organized correctly for future goals. But keeping in mind that Likely, it was Elon Musk's idea to ask some of these executives to leave. I don't think this is as big a deal for Tesla as Farzad makes it out to be here. He continues, This isn't uncharted territory for Tesla. Those that have followed the story closely for a long time know that these departures are only a matter of time. When you are a magnet for top-tier talent, by default, your departures will make waves. However, it still sucks all the same when it happens. Tesla is an incredible place to work, but if you are not ready and willing to make major sacrifices to ensure the company operates at a high level, it will chew you up and spit you out. This is by design, and I can guarantee that almost everyone at the company loves that it operates this way. No better feeling than being surrounded by people who are all aligned on working as hard as possible to make a common goal, oftentimes seemingly impossible, a reality. Now, are there any reasons for Elon Musk to be dissatisfied with the results of Rohan Patel and Drew Baglino. Well, we can look at Europe and we will see that 
recently the regulators in Europe decided basically to implement such policies that make it almost impossible for FSD to be deployed. Here's a post from Rohan Patel just from 10 days ago. The way the updated regulation works is that the driver would need to approve of almost every significant maneuver or set of maneuvers. So FSD sees, oh, there's an accident about to happen. Uh, press allow for me to, oh, too late, you're already in the accident. So Elon Musk might be looking for someone who would be specialized in Europe to replace Rohan Patel. Of course, I'm only speculating here, but Elon Musk is probably not overly thrilled with the progress of 4680s, and maybe that contributed to Elon Musk thinking, um, maybe it's time for you to go, Drew. And by the way, do you remember these headlines from June of 2020? As Lucy, Elon Musk wants to cut 10% of Tesla jobs. In December of 2022, we had a hiring freeze, and in February of 2023, 4% of Tesla's employees in New York were laid off. Tesla is understood to have signed a strategic deal with Tata Electronics to procure semiconductor chips for its worldwide operations. This likely also has to do with Tesla entering the market of India. Tesla has lowered its inventory discounts for Model Y in the US by up to thousands of dollars. As a result, Model Y inventory prices for all trims in the US are now up to 7.8% more expensive, which likely suggests that Tesla will focus more on margin going forward. These discounts have been up for months and months, meanwhile inventory is still at high levels. Tesla has realized, in my opinion, that price cuts aren't moving the needle and it is not an affordability issue, says James, and how now fully switched to margin focus? Good move, he thinks. The refreshed Model 3 will enter the South Korean market on April 26th. Well, this is interesting. A senior lead of NVIDIA Robotics tried FSD V12.3.4 last night and delivered a magical experience with no interventions. So that's pretty cool. Ray has been testing the latest FSD version in 10 different big parking lots and he seems to be pretty happy so far. This was quite an interesting maneuver in California, you can actually change lanes uh, in the intersection, and these two vehicles were pretty slow, and it changed the lane, and then it went back to this lane. Pretty good move. But only if there were no vehicles behind, and Ray confirmed there were no vehicles behind in Canada, though. You cannot do this, but V12.3 actually did it for someone. So Tesla, when it deploys robot taxis, will need to change a few rules for each market. Well, this is good news. Stopped by friend's house in Dallas who owns a Lucid and a Mercedes ESQ. First time he experienced FSD V12 and immediately he got sold. He's trading his Lucid for a Tesla Model S Plaid. Or his Blue Cruise hands-free driver assist under investigation after two fatal crashes. Inevitably, at some time, it will happen with FSD. I just hope that day does not come soon. But Tesla has made it quite a bit more clear that you have to pay attention because it's FSD supervised. Tesla is reportedly looking at potential showroom locations in New Delhi and Mumbai ahead of plans to begin sales in India later this year. It wants to begin with the showroom of three to 5,000 square feet. In responding to this post, Tesla FSD V13 will likely be grokking language tokens. What excites me the most about Grok 1.5 is the potential to solve edge cases in self-driving. Using language for chain of thought will help the car break down a complex scenario, reason with rules and counterfactuals and explain his decisions. With Tesla's highly mature data pipeline, it is not hard to label tons of edge cases with high quality human explanation traces and fine tune Grok to be far better than GPT-4 and Gemini-4 multimodal FSD reasoning. To which Elon replied with two sources of data scale infinitely. Number one, synthetic data, which has an is it true problem. And number two, real world video, which does not. So obviously you have to go with real world data. Cybertruck has arrived in Japan. These are some pretty cool clips. Look at all of this. Wow. <laughs> Was this foreshadowing? Elon posted this meme yesterday. I wouldn't think much of it, but <laughs> there's certainly a possibility. I want to spend a bit more time on the most important news of today. With a recent high profile and highly influential executive departure, Elon's grip on Tesla is now at an all-time high in 
My opinion says James, and I agree with that. And to me personally, this is definitely not a bad thing. Elon Musk made another comment about Drew Baglino leaving after taking a well-deserved break. Drew will no doubt go on to do great things. I look forward to following what he does next. There doesn't seem to be bad blood between these two. Well, at least coming from Elon's side. Which further makes me think that, at worst, this was a mutual decision of uh, the Tesla team and Drew. Let's see what Electric says about this whole situation. They often have a somewhat bearish take on things, but it's good to see what the other side is thinking too. When it comes to reporting facts, I find Electric to be fairly good, but the opinions are often a bit bearish. And I have no issues with that because I want to see what the other side thinks. One issue I have always had with Tesla is that if anything, it feels like headcount in the company is too low, not too high. There are so many issues that seem to fall through the cracks, both on the high and low level. Tesla owners, have you ever had trouble getting in touch with someone in service? I personally have not. I needed service for our vehicle. A mobile technician came in the same day quickly. So I was actually really impressed by that. Electric continues, and I think the reason for this is because Tesla employees are often overworked. This leads to burnout and turnover, a lack of institutional memory, and a lack of ownership for certain problems that don't get solved. Tesla owes a lot to its success to its startup mentality, where it's all hands on deck to grow the company that is shaking up a couple of the largest entire sectors on Earth, automotive and energy. The fact that it has shaken up these sectors so successfully is proof that this approach has been effective. And it will continue being effective, but occasionally this comes with the price of shaking things up and that startup mentality and being successful helps in recruiting as well there are a lot of jobs that claim they are changing the world but tesla can actually claim that it legitimately is on the vanguard of the changing transportation industry that's a great way to recruit the best and the brightest and as a result the company hasn't had to worry much about losing talent since it has such a recruitment advantage and can take its pick of the brightest minds out there however tesla is 20 years old now it's an enormous and established company it needs to mature and have more established processes less turnover and more security for its employees these sorts of things help reduce errors and increase morale and also slow down the company. So I am going to stick with Elon's approach. Well, these layoffs are a reaction to a reduction in sales, but not a loss of money if analysts are to be believed. Tesla is likely still profitable, though we'll hear more on Tuesday. They can't be helping with morale. Remaining employees will wake up to an email from a CEO who is increasingly absent as he spends all of his time addicted to an app he wasted $44 billion on, yet demands more stock while firing 10% of the company. See their already large workloads get larger and wonder if the feeling of changing the world is really worth all these newly apparent downsides. Maybe they'll wonder if getting poached by the new tech buzzword wouldn't be so bad. Ah yes, yes, definitely Elon Musk is spending all of his 100% of his time on X. He spends so much time on it that he even goes to Tesla, does some work, takes a picture which proves that he's doing some work, and then posts it on X. And of course, all of that counts as only time at X and not at Tesla. Again, this definitely did not happen at Tesla. And this is clear proof of Elon reposting about Tesla, which proves that Elon does not care about Tesla. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. This post is not about Tesla. Oh, uh, how come it's about Tesla again? Uh, and more about Tesla. How does Elon dare post multiple things about Tesla today? He's doing such a bad job. He should be not posting anything about Tesla. Sometimes electric stakes are fairly decent. This one, though, I think is a bit too bearish. Make sure to like the video so as many people see the positive side of today's news as well. The channel just reached 40,000 subscribers. All of the new subscribers and old subscribers, I would like to thank you so much for watching and tuning in daily. And if you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe right now. It has been quite a journey and lately the growth of the channel has accelerated. And I especially would like to thank everyone who clicks the like button because that makes a video go to a wider audience, which makes more people see the good Tesla stock news. Thank you so much again, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode.